Hey guys, this is Eskimo Poodle, and we're back at Let's Play Pokemon Leaf Green on the, P uh, the Game Boy Advance. Last time, we made our way into Mount Moon, and fought a whole bunch of Zubats, and we caught ourselves a Geodude as a temporary party member here. I leveled him up to level 11 off-screen to get Rock Throw, so he will be actually able to fight against Zubats and other such menaces here in the cave. And we're going to go ahead and continue through Mount Moon today. Uh, we're at the first... Uh, ladder here, right past the entrance. Uh, Zubat, you're gonna die because I currently have a rock ability, and that'll work out really well for me, and less well for you. I forget what the ladder on the far left side of the cave actually does. We'll check that out before we leave today, too. Yeah, Zubats, you're not gonna stand a chance anymore, so goodbye. Not that they actually give much in the way of experience, but oh well. Anyways, let's see what's down here. They might both lead to the same area, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, this is just going to be Paris. Uh, I'm not going to bother fighting Paris because they have annoying ha they have an annoying habit of paralyzing you. And I only have one paralyzed heal left. So, yeah, let's ignore that. Okay, that guy wants to fight us. Okay, so this is the optional path. Okay. Zubat, we're going to go ahead and murder you. We're still not going to be anywhere faster, anywhere near faster than a Zubat, so occasionally they'll get flinches with their Astonish there, which are always a pain in the ass, but they're not going to survive at all, so goodbye. Even without a critical hit, they're just not going to... They're just not going to make it. A Star Peas. That sells for a decent amount of money. So, good stuff for us. I am hoping to get the Clefairy to show up around here. And as soon as we find one, we'll capture one for our our Pokedex. And be pretty much good to go. If it comes down to it, I'll run around off screen for it though. Because it could be kind of a while before it shows up. Okay, you're doing A-OK. -okay. Let's go ahead and use you to fight that Team Rocket trainer over there. Yeah, Zubats are incredibly annoying, but the only reason I'm not using Repels right now is because our money situation is tight. In later caves, we'll be using Repels to avoid a lot of these battles, like, a lot more often. Also, at the moment, it's acceptable experience, and later on, again, we're going to have better ways of getting experience than fighting Zubats in caves. So let's see what this guy wants. We, Team Rocket, are Pokemon gangsters. We strike fear with our strength. Uh, yeah, your strength is non-existent for the most part. Except for, like, your leader. And even he's not that great. Okay, we got a Sandshrew right here. He is pure ground type, so that means he's going to be resistant to our rock throw, I do believe. And he has the nasty habit of lowering our defense there. Yay. I think he's resistant to rock type. Yeah, he is. Okay. So, we're going to want to go ahead and switch over to a grass or a water type here. Fighting is not super effective against ground, it's just effective against rock. So we're just going to go ahead and bubble this guy. Uh, Sandshrew is reasonably powerful and pretty good defensive wise, but he's not too much of a challenge. He is apparently just going to spam sand attack though, so if you really want to make sure you're going to hit, go ahead and keep Spearow out there, but he's not going to do a whole lot of damage. I mean, he'll do some, just bubble and whatever Bulbasaur has is, is just going to do better. Okay, you're about to use Rattata. Yeah, let's go back to Geodude there. He'll go ahead and finish you off. Or Rocky. Yeah, it's a very generic nickname, but you know what? It works. I'll take it. Even if you use Tackle or Quick Attack, you're not going to do that much damage there, bud. So, goodbye. And let's go with Tackle. Okay, there we go. Nice and easy like. The Rat Bastard is dead. And we got a level. We still need a couple more levels before we get our ground-type move, but once we do, that'll be really nice. Okay, you're about to use Zubat. That's awesome. We're not going to switch out at all because Zubats are weak. Okay, uh, by the way, with this move right here, Mudsport, what it does is it says it, re it lowers the power of electric-type moves, electric-type moves that are used. 
But the problem is, a lot of Pokemon that get it are ground types, and ground types are already are already immune to electric type moves. I mean, I guess if you use it and then switch out to somebody else, I guess that would work out for them. But half the time, wild Pokemon that have it, they'll just spam it because they don't know any better, and it'll just waste their turn or whatever. So I never use it, like ever. Maybe some of the people find a use for it, but I mean, we're already immune to it, so oh well. All right, you blew it. Awesome. Good for you. Darn it all, my associates won't stand for this. Well, good for your associates. All right, let's just go ahead and make our way to our next destination here. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to one-shot this guy. I mean, Bug is weak to Rock, but we'll see. Okay, that actually works out pretty well. Then again, we're probably down to not very many in the... In the rock throw department. Since we only have 15 total uses of it. So I don't want to waste them all on this guy. Let's see, what do we got here? Let me see how much we have left. Yeah, seven. Um, yeah, let's kill this guy. And after that, we'll probably just run from the rest of the random battles for the moment. Or just pop the repel that I keep forgetting about. Because we're almost at the end of the cave, really. We're about to be done. Alright, so let's just go ahead and... Let's see, how much more do you need for your level there, bud? You need... 34 more. Okay, so after our next battle against, like, a Zubat or something, we'll go ahead and use the Repel. Now we don't gotta deal with it anymore. Alright, so we already, went, we already went down that ladder, so we're fine there. Okay, this will be perfect. You wanna not go first there, dude? That'd be great. Goodbye. Alright. And we're going to go ahead and pop the repel, and that means nobody's going to bother us because... Well, we're going to be way higher level than anything in here now. So, yay. Let's go ahead and... Repel. Alright, so... For 100 steps, we're going to be safe from molestation from Zubats and anything else. We're still capable of getting into battles with trainers, just... Not with wild Pokemon. I don't think there's anything here, is there? No? No? Sometimes there's stuff in, like, little corners like that, but it never hurts to check. Alright, nothing there. This is that item that we saw earlier. And yeah, the 100 steps are not very long, so... That's why half the time I forget to use them, because, well, they're going to run out, like, really fast. Eventually, we'll get one that works for 200 steps, and one that works for 250 steps. I do believe the one that works for 200 steps is the more economical version, because it just costs slightly more than the regular repel, whereas the other one costs, like, almost double, or, like, an extra, like, 200 or 300 Poke Dollars more. Little kids shouldn't be messing around with grown-ups. That could be bad news. Well, it could be bad news for you, because you're a weenie. Alright, we got Rattata. And hopefully you have, like, another Sand Shrew, because that'd be great for Tipped Up, because he could gain a level and he could evolve. Hyper Fang is actually a pretty dangerous attack. It has, like, 80 base power or something like that. So it's a really powerful early game move for a rat, for the little rat bastard right there. If it's used on something that's not a rock type, and it's about the equivalent level, it'll probably do a fair chunk of your health, actually. Sentry, yeah, that actually works out pretty good. Alright, tipped up. Go for it. Alright, you're a nice high level. You're gonna give me some experience, and you're gonna die. Or not, okay. Sandshrew doesn't really have that great of special defense, but I think he is better than Geodude's. And also, he's only double weak to water, not quadruple. So, that's why he survives sometimes more. Also, he's a cute little bastard. Alright, there we go. We're all ready to level up there. And Rocket Grunt defeated. I'm steamed. And we got some money for winning. And like I said, at level 16, we're about to evolve. Now, the way evolution works is it'll always occur after battle, or outside of battle. So, if you're 
if your Squirtle evolves to level 16 and he gains level 16 in the battle, but then he also goes to level 17, then he's going to evolve after the battle at 17 and possibly miss out on any moves that he would have got, like uh, the level 16 evolution or something like that. But usually it's not that big of a deal. Alright, um, let's go ahead and pop a potion on you because you're kind of kind of low there, bud. Okay, there we go. And do we want you to still be up front? 14. Yeah, probably, actually. Okay, cool. And let's go ahead and use that other repel there. And that'll be the last rep. Oh, it's still on. Okay. Not gonna, it's not gonna last too much longer. Yeah, 100 steps really is not terribly far. Uh, we can probably make it without too much hassle here. Okay, we got ourselves a little mini boss here, so let's get to it. We Team Rocket shall find the fossils. Reviving Pokemon from them will be earn us huge riches. So they're gonna try to find fossils and revive ancient Pokemon from them. It sounds like a good plan, actually. I mean, I don't know where you're gonna revive them at, but okay. Okay, no, this guy's not the little mini-boss. The guy coming up is, I think. I mean, this guy does have a level 13 Rattata, so reasonably decent level, but nothing he can't handle. And goodbye. Rattatas will eventually get a move called Super Fang, which reduces the target's HP by half. So that'll actually be kind of dangerous later on when they get that. But they don't get it till... I want to say like 18 or something like that. Not not much later than early 20s, I don't think. So Rattatas do get some decent moves. It's just their stats are pretty average. And also, they're like the first thing you can ever catch. Urgh, now I'm mad. And we got more money, yay. Once we get out of here, we'll actually be able to buy more potions and such, so that'll be really nice. Let's see, how is our money situation here? 3,000, okay, not bad. Again, we're going to have opportunity to make plenty more money coming up here. And there's a moonstone hidden right there, very nice, I like it. And more Zubats, which I'm not going to worry about. Goodbye. Can I run away? No? Okay. I think sometimes if the Pokemon that you're fighting is way faster than you, you're going to have a hard time escaping. Okay, this guy right here is the little mini-boss that I was thinking about, actually. He's not super tough, but, well, he's a, he's a moderate challenge. Okay, so let's go ahead and fight you. Hey, stop. I found these fossils. They're both mine. And this super nerd is trying to protect his... To protect his uh, find over here. All right, uh, poison types are weak to psychic and ground, so if you have a butterfree, that'll actually work out pretty good for you here. But at the moment, we only have rock types, so we're t we'll do what we can. And we're out of our rock type move now, so oh well. Yeah, Grimer is really big on the whole defense thing. Actually, I think his I think his special defense is naturally higher. And you disabled my attack, you brat bastard. Okay, fine. Uh, this is defense crow until we can keep going here. But yeah, I think his special defense is slightly higher than his physical defense, so he just likes to buff up his physical defense to keep going. Let me actually check on that real fast, because I think that's the case. Let's see. Grimer, where you at, dude? Grimer. Okay, Grimer has equal defenses. His evolved form has, yeah, better special defense by a pretty decent amount, but still acceptable regular defense. Can I get my tackle back yet? Because that'd be great. Yeah, poison types are actually mildly challenging early in the game, simply for the fact that you're probably not going to have the, the ground or... Psychic moves to actually damage them really great. And they're resistant to a decent amount of stuff. Like, they're resistant to 
grass and bug and I think fighting. So they're reasonably resistant to some other stuff. Uh, Ultorb. Yeah, let's switch out to Minky here, or Bananas. Simply for the fact that... Well, we're not going to do a whole lot of damage with just Tackle on Rocky there. So, Karate Chop should do reasonably good here. There you go. We might end up getting paralyzed because he does have static. But hopefully not. Alright, coughing, he's another poison type. He's gonna be, again, resistant to. He's gonna be resistant to fighting, and he actually does have a good physical defense. So let me see here, what can we switch out for? Let's switch out to Sparky. That'll work. Yeah, he does have a pretty good physical defense, so we wanna watch out for that. Try to use your special attacks if you can. Uh, let's go ahead and paralyze him right off the bat. That way he's going to have a chance to not attack every once in a while. Which will be really good for us. And we're just going to keep on spamming our Thunder Shocks. That'll work out pretty good for us. There you go. Alright. And you're still paralyzed. That makes my life easy. Par Paralyze is great simply for the fact that it cuts their speed in half and it gives them a chance to not hit. With speed, with uh, sleep, they can't they can't attack for several turns, but they can also wake up um, within a set number of turns. Like usually, sleep will last from like two to five turns, but they can wake up anywhere in that number usually. Ooh, nice speed boost there. And Miguel is defeated. Okay, I'll share. Alright, we got 288 for winning. Awesome. We should take a fossil. No being greedy. Okay, uh, let me see here. I did get one of these in my Fire Red playthrough here. So let me make sure I'm getting the right one here. I think I want... Let's see here. Helix. I th think I want the Dome Fossil. Alright, he's just going to go ahead and take the Helix Fossil for himself. And as far as I'm aware, there's no way to get that in... No way to get the other Fossil in-game without, like, trading for someone. Okay, Dome Fossil. Part of a shell. No, I think that's the one I already got. So, let me actually reset here and... Yeah, I think that might be the one that I already got. So, let me... Let me get the Helix, read that description, and I'll be able to tell if it's the right one. Okay, there we go. Let's see. Part of a seashell. Uh, I think this is the one that I'm... Okay, you know, let me actually go check again, just to be on the safe side. Okay, Helix is the one that we want right there. Alright, so, there we go. We'll go over what the Pokemon turn into later in the game, since we're not going to be able to get them for some time. Like, the 7th gym sometime. So, quite some time. But, just as a quick overview, the... Go away. The Helix Fossil that we got right now, that'll be the slightly more defensive option and also has a good special attack, whereas the other one will be slightly speedier and have good physical attack. But they're both reasonably decent. Pro actually, probably the Helix Fossil is slightly better, at least in this game, because they haven't done the physical split, special split yet, so that'll probably take away from the Dome Fossil just a little bit. Now what do we got here? Uh, antidote, yay, not that we actually need it, but I'll take it. Alright, let's go ahead and get out of here. But yeah, they're both eh, average, so nothing great really. Route 4, Mount Moon to Cerulean City. Alright, cool. Let's go ahead and head on in. Okay, these guys right here, these are the first examples of 
I think they're the first examples. They're the first examples of move tutors here in Fire Red and Leaf Green. A punch of roaring ferocity, packed with destructive power. When the chips are down, Mega Punch is the ultimate attack. You agree, yes? Now, let me teach it to your Pokemon. Eh, I'm good. You'll be back when you understand the worth of Mega Punch. A kick of brutal ferocity, packed with destructive power. When you get right down to it, Mega Kick is the ultimate attack. Don't you agree? Okay, I'll teach it. No, I'm good. You'll come crawling back when you realize the value of Mega Kick. Uh, these were originally TMs in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, but since they t tend to change the TMs in between games or whatever, uh, they put these Move Tutors in as ways to get these old TMs on Pokemon. And just like TMs, they are one use, so they'll be taught to one Pokemon and then they won't teach them again. I mean, you can choose both of these, obviously, but you can only teach them once per. Despite the names, Mega Punch and Mega Kick, they're actually normal type moves. I do believe Mega Punch is weaker but more accurate, whereas Mega Kick is stronger but less accurate. But again, they're both normal type moves, so it's not really as good as you would think it would be. It's unfortunate, but oh well, whatever. Is there anything hidden in the grass right here? No? Okay. So let's go ahead and keep on going then. Eventually we'll get an item that makes it so we can look for items on the ground without having to constantly spam the button there. But for now we just have to kind of guess. By the way, if you ever see a patch of grass that's kind of darker like that, that's usually a good indication of something being there. Not 100%, but it's usually a decent indication that there might be something there. TML5, Roar. Uh, that's a move that I don't particularly care for. It... I mean, it's okay, but what it does is it instantly ends a Pokemon battle, or tries to instantly end a Pokemon battle by making the wild Pokemon run away. So, there you go. I mean, I personally try to fight them and catch them myself, but that's just the way it is. In later games, I don't know if they did it in this one, but in later games, they switched it, they switched it up a little bit to work in trainer battles. It'll cause the, the current Pokemon out to be replaced with a, a reserve Pokemon. It might be the case in this game. I don't recall exactly, but we'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and... By the way, once you jump down that particular ledge right there, or any of these ledges, you can't go back to Mount Moon for quite some time. So you want to be careful about that in case you want anything over there, but I'm pretty much done there right now. All right, more Spearows. I'm not going to fight you just yet. So yeah, you can't, you can't get back up to Mount Moon for a little while. I mean, not that there's really anything in there that I care about, except for that Clefairy that I forgot about, but whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and yeah, go to the PC here. And let's heal up. Yeah, Roar, that's a TM that I'll probably never use. That Bill, I heard that it'll do whatever it takes to get rare Pokemon. He's not above doing all sorts of things, I've heard. Okay. Why don't you go upstairs and try trading Pokemon with your friends? We will, actually, but I'll probably end up... I'm not sure if I'm going to do that off-screen just for the fact that it'll look kind of weird if I... If I either record one screen or both screens. I'm not sure if I can record both. I probably can, but it'll still look kind of weird. Bill has lots of Pokemon. He collects rare ones, too. So I'll either do it on-screen with only... With only one, uh, have you heard about Bill? Everyone calls him a Pokemaniac. I think people are just jealous of Bill, though. Who wouldn't want to boast about their Pokemon? So yeah, if I, had, if, I if I do any trading, which I which I can do on the PC, actually, uh, due to the emulator that I'm using, um, I'll, either, I'll either do it off-screen, or I'll try to put the two smaller emulator windows side-by-side, side, or I'll just show my side of the of the trade as it happens, but more than likely I'll just try to do it off-screen. But we'll see. Uh, I do want to deposit... You. There you go. Alright, we're good to go. Alright, we're not going to explore... We're not going to explore Cerulean City just yet. There is a couple things we can do over here on this little route. So let's go ahead and see if there's any Pokemon over here. Okay, Spiro, it's okay, but not really what I'm looking for. 
Here in this particular route, we're going to run into our first example of version exclusives, which are Pokemon that can only be caught in one version of the game. And you have to trade with the other version of the game in order to get the Pokemon that would appear in that version. Now previously we've had Pokemon that are rarer in one version or another, like for example Nidoran male is rarer in this game than they are in Fire Red, but now that we're on this route we actually have Pokemon that aren't going to appear at all in this version of the game wildly. Like we'll still see them on trainers teams, but we're not going to have a chance to capture them for ourselves unless we trade with another trainer. Okay, and here it is. Sandshrew, he is the version exclusive for Leaf Green. Also, in the original versions, he's exclusive to Blue version. He is the pure ground type. He has, let me see here, pretty good defense and attack. Let me see if I can't find his stats real fast. Uh, let's see. So his evolved form, which is at level 22, so nice and early, he has 110 defense, 100 attack, and then slightly lower special defense that, than Geodude, slightly higher speed, and then slightly lower HP. So he's slightly inferior to Geodude stats-wise, but he is pure ground type, so he doesn't have the quadruple weakness to... He doesn't have the quadruple weakness to water like... like uh, Geodude does. Now, G Sandshrew is pretty decent because, just because he has acceptable speed and acceptable stats, but the main problem with him is his move pool. In this game, despite being a ground type, he only ever learns normal type moves and non-damaging non -damaging ground type moves, except for like one that really is not that great. So... Yeah, he just does not get very good moves unless you use like TMs or breeding, which is again not available till the end of the game for some reason. I mean, he, he can get some good stuff out of TMs, but he doesn't actually start learning ground type moves for some reason until the fourth generation of games. So, and even then, they're not that great. Let's see. Yeah, for some reason, some reason the move pool does move pools just are not great. Uh, let's see, let's see, Gen 5. Yeah, I guess Gen 5 you learn some good stuff, but... Yeah, it's just, he's not bad, it's just his... His move pool is not great, unless you actually take the time to use TMs on him, so... Probably not going to worry about him. I'll capture him, and try to evolve him. But other than that, it's not gonna... It's not gonna do a whole lot for us. Uh, let's just go ahead and switch over to Pikachu since he will eventually paralyze himself here. And we can just go ahead and keep quick attacking until we get his HP down a little bit. Because he's not resistant to normal attacks. I mean, he has reasonably decent defense, so it's not going to do that much, but he's not resistant to it. Unlike a rock type, which would be. You want to actually attack him here, dude? That'd be great. Come on. The version exclusive for Fire Red or just the Red version is Ekans, the Snake type, or the the, the the Snake Pokemon that we've saw. He is again not terribly great, but actually he's not terribly great, but he's not. He's not horrible. He, unlike unlike, unlike uh, Stantru here, he actually does learn poison type moves, you know, his type. And he also does learn some dark type moves, which are effective against psychics, so he can kind of fight back against the type that he's weak to. As for stats, his evolved form has acceptable attack and speed in the 80s, and then everything else is 60 ish, with special defense being just under 80. So, acceptable, but there's better poison types out there for sure. There you go, keep scratching. So, the, the, the first version of exclus exclusives we get, they're not great, but, eh, they're acceptable. Sandshrew, Sandshrew is definitely the better version exclusive, but again, you have to use the 
you have to use the uh, TMs on him to actually get anything. Okay, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you sand attacking me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to capture you here. You're in the yellow, so it should work out pretty good. There you go. Got him. Okay. Burrows deep underground and arid location is far from water. It only emerges to hunt for prey. And yeah, he's a little mouse Pokemon, even though he's really a, a shrew, as his name suggests, but whatever. But yeah, that's our version exclusive right there for the moment. And yeah, he's okay. I'm not going to use him myself, but oh well. Anyways, next episode, we're going to go ahead and explore Cerulean City and see what we can find here. So guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Bold. That is defense up, attack down, so... Not great for him since he wants to have more physical attack, but whatever. Alright, bye.